Hi, I'm Edward Funk, and this is podcast number 58. The title really is a question. Was Spencer Tracy the love of Loretta Young's life? Now, all this material is coming from copywritten material. The book is called Behind the Door, The Real Story of Loretta Young. Okay, here we go. Spencer Tracy was 33, and Loretta was 20, when they met on the set of A Man's Castle. Loretta describes Spencer as having gray-blue eyes, reddish blonde hair, and a stocky belt. She recalled, I quickly fell in love with Spencer Tracy. I think the first day or two, anybody would uh, if you were around him. When he showed you attention, it was just like he played it on the screen. It was like a little pearl given to you on a silver platter. A Man's Castle was another depression story, this time on a group of unfortunates living in a shanty town, uh, well, Shanty Hooverville, along New York's East River. Amidst all the indignity of poverty, Spencer and Loretta's characters fall in love. She is certain uh, that she's found her happiness, uh, but he, having always felt trapped by life, it's unwilling to make any kind of commitment. The sound of a train was always suggests freedom to him. Loretta related what it was like to work with Spencer. It was an absolute pleasure. Uh, you never knew when he was rehearsing or where the camera was going. He didn't seem to have any nerves. You didn't sense any surge of adrenaline, but he knew exactly where he was going at all times. And if you were lucky, he carried you along with him. There were several weeks into production and Loretta recalled, we finished early and I invited him home to lunch. He said, I'd love you to meet, I'd love to meet your family. Anyway, I called mama and mama, I said, I'm coming home with, for lunch and I'm going to bring Spencer with me. She said, fine. I talked a lot about him. She had a quick, a nice lunch thrown together and he was charming. Everybody was crazy about him. When he left, Mama said, Loretta, don't get serious about this boy. He's separated from his wife. He's married and as far as you're concerned, he'll always be married because he's married in the Catholic Church. She asked him all these questions while I was out of the room and he had been completely honest. Oh, Mom, I'm not serious about him. He's just a very nice to work with. I thought he's charming friend and that's all. Little did I know how love can wind you around his little finger. A little note here. The Catholic Church teaches that if you marry in the Catholic Church, uh, and well, that you're married for life, even if the state recognizes uh, divorce proceedings. Spencer Tracy had met Louise Treadwell 10 years earlier. She was an actress, but immediately gave up her career when they married. Their son, John Tracy, was born in 1924, and their daughter, Susie, 1932. When Spencer met Loretta on the set of A Man's Castles, the Tracys had been separated for a month, and Spencer was living in a townhouse. Loretta observed that their real feelings towards each other came through on the screen. And she says, the closer the part is to home, the easier it is to do because you call all those emotions that you feel anyway. As I recall, some of those scenes were so casual that if we hadn't been falling in love with each other, we would have done much more uh, with the scenes. But because we were, all I had to do was just lean up and whisper something in Sarah and he'd say, now go, go on home. When you feel something that does register on the screen, what did Loretta find so attractive about Spencer? She recalled, part of Spencer's allure to me was that he played it very cool. Just like in the picture, he kind of brushes her off softly, but she knows deep down that he's wild about her. He played it the same way. Never, for instance, was he demonstrative, no holding hands or kissing in public or anything like that. He was always just kind of amused at everything that I did. He used to call me a well, little or little who's it. He took that, uh, that name 
from the movie. It was his way of saying, oh, little old nothing, but I love you anyway. I felt that he was always perfectly at ease with himself. He seemed to roll with everything. Unlike so many of us actors, he did demand the center stage. What I remember mostly about him was his delightful sense of humor. We laughed a lot. He didn't take himself too seriously. He was not devoted to his job, yet I don't think that he could ever have thought of being anything but an actor. He really did love it. He used to say, oh, there's nothing to it. You just know your lines and be on time and just say the words. But indeed, there was much more to it than that, and he knew there was. Here we go. Most seductive of all to Loretta was how Spencer felt about her. She recalled, he said he couldn't imagine anyone as beautiful as me being in love with him. I knew that it was just love talk, but it was love talk that my romantic nature longed to hear. He treated me like I was the only one who mattered in the world. A favorite getaway for the couple was a little restaurant on San Vicente Boulevard called the Fossilette. The better we call it. We used to go there when we were first going out together because it was private. We would walk back through a little arbor into this restaurant, and then they had private booths. I guess we chose this place because we knew we shouldn't be seeing each other. But we must have gotten over the need to be hiding because I wound up every Sunday afternoon at the Will Rogers Polo Fort. Spencer played with Zanuck in that group, and the thing, and that was the thing to do to go out and watch them play. Loretta only met Spencer's son, John, once, and that was at the polo field, she recalled. Spencer brought him over to me, and he was charming. He was stone deaf. The boy turned around to do something, and to get his attention, Spencer just tapped the ground twice with his foot, and the boy turned around and looked at him. I remember thinking, how marvelous. They know each other so well. And they can communicate with the vibrations of the ground. Spencer talked tenderly about his daughter, Susie, but I think that Joni was the most important person in his life. He certainly talked about him the most. How bright he was, how responsible he felt for him, how he wanted to make him secure for life. I don't think Spencer would have done anything to make Johnny's life more difficult, such as divorcing his mother and marrying somebody else. I don't know why I say that, but the last person in the world that Spencer would hurt would have been Johnny. I mean, any more than he already had by not living at home with the family. Loretta's younger sister, Georgiana, reflected. Spencer was just the love of Loretta's life. I'm sure of it. He used to come to our house every night, and if Loretta was working, the two of them used to have dinner on trays by the fireplace. I would sit on the floor by Spencer. He was darling, and I remembered he put his arm around me, and I would just rub his hand. Smith was very fatherly, and I just loved him so much. Everybody loved Spencer, and he was madly, madly in love with Loretta. You felt it, even if I, even I as a child, felt that. And it felt so good to be in the room with the two of them because there was so much love there. Loretta knew that Spencer had something going with both Joan Bennett and Betty Davis, and suspected that might have precipitated the separation from his wife. A story that Spencer told Loretta about a visit he had made to Joan Bennett when she was in the hospital reviews his idealistic, idealistic view of women. Joan's foot had been sticking out from under the covers, and he exclaimed, she had nail polish on her toenails. He looked so horrified. The influence of Spencer's Irish Catholic background was showing. The part of him that was looking for purity and innocence. That probably is why he was so tolerant of Loretta's desire to not cross certain boundaries in their lovemaking. It was okay if he brought himself to an orgasm, but there would be no intercourse. Loretta defended the limitations of their lovemaking. I thought that that was perfectly normal in those days. I remember him saying something about another woman. Oh, sure, she's had them all, but none of them are ever going to marry her. Loretta visited Spencer's townhouse on only one occasion. His mother happened to be there, 
and she behaved in a very cold manner to Loretta. Loretta recalled talking about this later to her. I asked him, does she think I'm your mistress? He replied, well, I think she does. I said, then you better straighten her out. Loretta and Spencer didn't see their relationship as a married man with a mistress. They just saw themselves as deeply in love, but in a hopeless situation. Loretta reflected. When you're in love, you can close your mind an awful lot, no matter how dangerous a situation may be. She continued, I don't think he ever would have gotten a divorce, even if I asked him. And there was no point in my asking him because I couldn't marry him in the church. I'd already gone that route with Grant Withers, and I knew that didn't work. Before we close out this podcast, I want to go back to something I said in a previous podcast about why Loretta never wanted to play a role, a movie role, in which the audience didn't like her. Loretta didn't buy my theory that her dad leaving the family when she was four had any influence on her later in her life. She just didn't want to acknowledge that he played that important of a role in her life. But as we see going forward, Loretta was perfectly willing to invite a married man to me her the main focus of his romantic love. Her uh, relationship with Spencer Tracy is a ca- classic case in point. From Loretta's point of view, making love with a married man was allowable as long as you didn't go full intercourse. Just a really crazy and meaningless distinction. How she could have been so surprised that Spencer's mother looked at her as Spencer's mistress shows how illogical she could be. I bring this up in the same context of her not wanting to play any role where the audience wouldn't like her, because I think that her father leaving her at age four followed Loretta for the rest of her life, and that she had to have the attention of every man in the room. If a man wasn't caught under her spell, generally, she really didn't think he was much of a man. So more on Spencer Tracy in the next podcast. Thank you.